Today, I'm here to share a crucial message. In today's world, we're inundated with advice on how to attract money and achieve financial success. We're encouraged to work harder, hustle more, and manifest our desires. Yet, despite our best efforts, many of us still struggle to attain the abundance we seek. If you can relate to this, you're not alone. I've met countless individuals who've exerted tremendous effort, but still can't seem to attract the money they desire. That's why in today's message, I'll share the five reasons why you might be unable to attract money despite your efforts. These are common pitfalls many of us fall into, and by understanding them, you can turn things around and finally start attracting the wealth and abundance you deserve. If you're ready to delve deep into the reasons behind your financial struggles and learn how to overcome them, then stay tuned, because this message is for you. Let's get started. Number 5. Our Negative Mindset Toward Money Many of us have been conditioned to believe that money is hard to come by. We've been taught that money is the root of all evil, and that desiring more makes us greedy and selfish. But let me tell you my friends, this is simply not true. Money is not the problem. Our mindset is. We live in a world where money is a necessity. It allows us to live comfortably, provide for our families, and pursue our passions and dreams. Yet many of us struggle to attract money into our lives despite our hard work and efforts. So, what's the reason behind this? It all comes down to our mindset. Our thoughts and beliefs are powerful. They shape our reality and determine our actions. If we have a negative mindset toward money, we'll continue to attract lack and scarcity into our lives. We'll constantly find ourselves struggling to make ends meet, facing unexpected expenses, and feeling like we just can't get ahead. But my friends, it doesn't have to be this way. We have the power to change our mindset and attract abundance and prosperity into our lives. It all starts with understanding and acknowledging our negative thoughts and beliefs about money. How many times have you caught yourself saying things like, I can't afford that, or money doesn't grow on trees, or rich, people are just lucky. These are all examples of negative beliefs we've been conditioned to have about money, and they're holding us back from achieving financial success. We need to start reprogramming our minds and replacing these negative thoughts with positive ones. Instead of saying, I can't afford that, say, how can I afford that? Instead of saying money doesn't grow on trees, say money is abundant and available to me. And instead of saying rich people are just lucky, say, I am capable of creating my own luck and attracting wealth into my life. You see, my friends, it all starts with our thoughts. We need to believe that we are worthy and deserving of financial success. We need to let go of any guilt or shame we may have around wanting more money. We need to understand that having more money does not make us greedy or selfish, but rather, it allows us to do more good in the world. But changing our mindset isn't enough. We also need to take action. We need to be proactive in our pursuit of financial success. This means setting clear and specific goals, creating a plan, and taking consistent action toward achieving those goals. We also need to surround ourselves with people who have a positive mindset toward money. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If we surround ourselves with people who have a negative mindset toward money, we'll continue to be influenced by their beliefs and thoughts. But if we surround ourselves with people who have a positive mindset toward money, we'll be inspired and motivated to achieve financial success. My friends, I want you to understand that you have the power to attract money into your life. It all starts with your mindset. Believe that you are capable of achieving financial success. Believe that money is abundant and available to you. Believe that you are worthy and deserving of wealth. And most importantly, take action toward achieving your goals. Now, on to number four. The lack of clarity and focus when it comes to attracting money. We live in a society obsessed with wealth and success. We're constantly bombarded with images of luxury and opulence, and it's no wonder that we all want a piece of the pie. We work hard, we hustle, we try every trick in the book, but for some reason, we still can't seem to attract the money we desire. So, what's the problem? Why do some people effortlessly attract money while others struggle? The answer is simple. Lack of clarity and focus. You see, money isn't just about having a lot of zeros in your bank account. It's about having a clear understanding of what you want and where you're heading. Without this clarity, it's like trying to navigate a ship without a compass. You may end up going in circles or worse, sinking. So my friends, I want you to take a moment and ask yourself, 
What do you really want when it comes to money? Is it financial stability, the ability to travel the world, or perhaps the freedom to pursue your passions? Whatever it may be, it's crucial that you have a clear and specific goal in mind. Without a target, how can you expect to hit the bullseye? But having clarity is just the first step. The next and equally important step is focus. You can have the clearest goal in mind, but if you're not focused on it, it will remain just a distant dream. Think of it this way. Imagine you're driving a car, and your goal is to reach a specific destination. You have the address, you know the route. But if you keep getting distracted by every billboard and sign on the road, you'll never reach your destination. You must stay focused on the road ahead. And the same goes for your financial goals. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. But Jim, I am focused on my goal. I work hard every day, but still, I can't seem to attract the money I want. And to that, I say, are you really focused? You see, focus isn't just about working hard. It's about working smart. It's about understanding the difference between being busy and being productive. Let me give you an example. Imagine you have a goal to save $10,000 in a year. You work a 9-to-5 job, and after work, you spend a few hours on your side hustle. You're working hard, but are you really focused on your goal? What if I told you that by simply cutting out unnecessary expenses, you could save an extra $500 a month? That's $6,000 in a year, just by being more mindful of your spending. That is the power of focus. It allows you to see the bigger picture and make the necessary changes to reach your goal. But it's not just about cutting expenses, it's also about investing your time and energy wisely. Are you spending hours scrolling through social media or binge watching the latest TV series? Or are you using that time to learn a new skill or work on your side hustle? Remember, time is our most valuable asset, and it's up to us to use it wisely. Now, I want to address a common misconception when it comes to attracting money. The belief that it's solely dependent on external factors. Many of us believe that we need to wait for the right opportunity to come along or for luck to be on our side. But the truth is, we have the power to create our own opportunities and make our own luck. You see, the universe is always working in our favor, but it can only do so much. It's up to us to take action and make things happen. So, if you want to attract money, you need to take control of your life and your actions. You need to be proactive, not reactive. You need to be the driver of your own life, not just a passenger. But I understand that it's not always easy. We all face challenges and setbacks on our journey to success. But remember, it's not about how many times you fall. It's about how many times you get back up. So, if you've been struggling to attract money, don't give up. Instead, take a step back, reassess your goals, and refocus your efforts. Trust me, the universe will reward your determination and hard work. Now, on to number three. One of the main reasons why people struggle to attract money is because of their lack of action. It's not enough to simply desire wealth and abundance. You must take action toward your goals and dreams. As the saying goes, dreams don't work unless you do. It's not enough to wish for money to come into your life. You must actively pursue it. But why do so many people fail to take action? The answer lies in fear. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. We're all familiar with these fears, and they can be paralyzing. They can prevent us from taking the necessary steps toward our goals and dreams. But here's the thing. Fear is a natural part of life. It's not something to be avoided, but rather something to be embraced and overcome. As the great author and motivational speaker Les Brown once said, if you take responsibility for yourself, you will develop a hunger to accomplish your dreams. So my friends, I urge you to take responsibility for your life and your dreams. Do not let fear hold you back. Instead, use it as a motivator to push you toward your goals. Take action, even if it's small steps at first. Every step you take toward your dreams brings you closer to them. And remember, it's better to try and fail than to never try at all. But taking action isn't enough. You must also have a clear and specific goal in mind. Many people struggle to attract money because they have a vague idea of what they want. They say things like, I want to be rich, or I want to be financially free. Well, these are admirable goals. They're not specific enough. They are not specific enough. How much money do you want? By when do you want to achieve it? What will you do with the money once you have it? These are the questions you must answer to have a clear and specific goal. Once you have a clear goal in mind, 
you must also have a plan to achieve it. This is where many people fall short. They have a goal, but they have no idea how to reach it. This is where personal development comes into play. You must continuously work on yourself and develop the skills and mindset necessary to achieve your goals. As the great entrepreneur and author Jim Rohn once said, success is not to be pursued. It is to be attracted by the person you become. You must become the person who is capable of attracting success and wealth into your life. This means continuously learning, growing, and improving yourself. As the saying goes, if you want to have more, you must become more. This is why personal development is so crucial in the journey towards success and abundance. Unfortunately, many people neglect this aspect of their lives. They think that they can just work hard and money will come. But the truth is, success is not just about hard work. It is also about working smart and continuously improving yourself. As the great inventor and businessman Thomas Edison once said, opportunity is missed by most people because it is dressed in overalls and looks like work. So, my friends, I urge you to not only take action but also to work on yourself. Read books, attend seminars, surround yourself with successful and like-minded individuals. As Jim Rohn said, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So choose your circle wisely and make sure they are pushing you towards your goals, not holding you back. In addition to taking action and continuously working on yourself, you must also have a positive mindset. This is another crucial aspect of personal development. Your thoughts and beliefs shape your reality. If you constantly think and believe that you are not capable of attracting money, then that will become your reality. But if you believe that you are capable and deserving of wealth and abundance, then that will also become your reality. As the great motivational speaker and author Zig Ziglar once said, your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. Your attitude and mindset are what will ultimately determine your success in life. So my friends, I urge you to adopt a positive mindset and believe in yourself and your abilities. Now, to number two. You see, the biggest obstacle to attracting money is not external circumstances or lack of opportunity, but rather our own resistance to change. We are creatures of habit, and we often resist change, even when it is for our own benefit. We become comfortable in our routines and our ways of thinking, and we are afraid to step out of our comfort zones. But let me tell you, my friends, change is necessary for growth. If we want to attract money and achieve financial success, we must be willing to change our mindset and our habits. We must be open to new ideas and new ways of thinking. As the great Tony Robbins once said, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. If we want different results, we must be willing to do things differently. So, what are some of the ways in which we resist change and hinder our ability to attract money? Let's explore a few of them. Firstly, fear. Fear is a powerful emotion that can hold us back from achieving our dreams. We fear failure, we fear rejection, we fear the unknown. And when it comes to money, fear can manifest in many ways. We fear taking risks, we fear investing, we fear asking for a raise or negotiating a higher salary. But let me tell you, my friends, fear is just an illusion. It is a product of our minds, and it only has power over us if we allow it to. We must learn to face our fears and push through them if we want to attract money and achieve our financial goals. Next, we have limiting beliefs. These are the beliefs that we hold about ourselves and our abilities, often formed in childhood or through past experiences. We may believe that we are not smart enough, not talented enough, not worthy enough to attract money. But the truth is, these beliefs are holding us back from reaching our full potential. We must challenge these limiting beliefs and replace them with empowering ones. As Henry Ford once said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Another way in which we resist change is through our habits. Our daily habits and routines have a significant impact on our lives, including our financial success. If we have habits that are not serving us, such as overspending, procrastination, or lack of discipline, then we will struggle to attract money. We must develop new habits that align with our financial goals and support our growth. As Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And finally, we have our comfort zones. As I mentioned earlier, we become comfortable in our routines and ways of thinking, and we are afraid to step out of our comfort zones. But let me tell you, my friends, nothing great ever comes from staying in our comfort zones. 
We must be willing to take risks and try new things if we want to attract money and achieve financial success. As the saying goes, a ship in harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are built for. Now you may be thinking, okay Jim, I understand that resistance to change is holding me back, but how do I overcome it? Well my friends the first step is awareness. We must become aware of our thoughts, beliefs and habits that are hindering our ability to attract money. Once we are aware, we can then take action and make the necessary changes. One powerful tool that can help us overcome resistance to change is personal development. Personal development is the process of improving oneself through various techniques and strategies. It helps us to become more self-aware, develop new skills, and change our mindset. By investing in personal development, we can break through our limiting beliefs, develop new habits, and step out of our comfort zones. It is a crucial aspect of attracting money and achieving success in all areas of our lives. So my friends, I urge you to take action today. Become aware of your resistance to change and make a commitment to overcome it. Invest in personal development and make it a priority in your life. And remember, change may be uncomfortable, but it is necessary for growth and success. Now to number one. I like to call this the root cause. Despite your efforts, you just can't seem to attract money into your life. And today, I want to address the root cause of this issue. Lack of self-worth. You see, we live in a world where money is often equated with success and happiness. We are bombarded with messages that tell us we need to have more, be more, and do more in order to be truly fulfilled. And in the pursuit of this external validation, we often forget to look within ourselves and recognize our own worth. But let me tell you this, my friends. Your self-worth is not determined by the amount of money in your bank account. It is not measured by the material possessions you own or the job title you hold. Your self-worth is inherent. It is a part of your being, and it is not dependent on external factors. So why then do so many of us struggle to attract money into our lives? The answer lies in our beliefs and mindset. Many of us have been conditioned to believe that we are not good enough, that we are not worthy of abundance and success. We carry these limiting beliefs with us, and they manifest in our actions and decisions, ultimately hindering our ability to attract money. But here's the truth. You are worthy of all the abundance and success that you desire. You have unique talents, skills, and experiences that make you valuable and deserving of wealth. But in order to attract money, you must first believe in your own worth. So how do we cultivate this belief in our own self-worth? It starts with changing our mindset and adopting a new perspective. Instead of focusing on what we lack, we must shift our focus to what we have to offer. Each and every one of us has something to offer the world, and it is up to us to recognize and embrace our strengths. Next, we must let go of comparison. It is human nature to compare ourselves to others, but this only leads to feelings of inadequacy and self-doubt. Remember, your journey is unique, and comparing it to someone else's will only hold you back. Instead, focus on your own progress and celebrate your own achievements. Furthermore, we must learn to value ourselves and our time. Many of us have a tendency to say yes to everything, to put others before ourselves, and to undervalue our own worth. But the truth is, our time and energy are valuable commodities. We must learn to say no to things that do not align with our goals and priorities, and to set boundaries that protect our well-being. But perhaps most importantly, we must learn to love and accept ourselves unconditionally. This means embracing our flaws and imperfections, and recognizing that they make us unique and special. It means forgiving ourselves for past mistakes, and letting go of self-judgment. When we truly love and accept ourselves, we open ourselves up to receiving abundance and success. Now I know that changing our mindset and beliefs is not an easy task. It takes time, effort, and patience. But I can assure you, it is worth it. When you start to believe in your own worth, you will see a shift in your energy and actions. You will start to attract opportunities and abundance into your life, and you will have the confidence to seize them. So my friends, I urge you to let go of any beliefs that are holding you back from attracting money into your life. Believe in your own worth, and the universe will respond in kind. Remember, you are capable, you are deserving, and you are enough. And with this newfound belief in yourself, you will be ready to embark on the journey of personal development, which we will explore in part two of this speech. But for now, I leave you with this.
Your self-worth is the foundation of your success. Nurture it, believe in it, and watch as your life transforms. Thank you. I'm excited to share some powerful insights on overcoming one of the biggest challenges we all face. Procrastination. In today's message, we'll delve into the root causes of procrastination and offer practical strategies to break free from its grip. I understand firsthand how frustrating it can be to constantly delay tasks and feel like we're not living up to our full potential. But here's the good news. You are not alone. Procrastination is a common struggle that affects people from all walks of life. However, the key to overcoming it lies in understanding why we procrastinate and taking intentional action to change our habits. By tuning into this message, you've already taken the first step towards beating procrastination for good. I'm confident that with the right mindset and tools, you can turn things around and become a more productive and successful individual. So let's dive into our five ways to beat procrastination and start taking control of our lives. Remember, it's never too late to make a positive change. Let's get started. Starting with the fifth way you can beat procrastination for good, which is rewarding yourself. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. Isn't rewarding yourself just another form of procrastination? And my answer to that is no. There's a difference between rewarding yourself and indulging in laziness. Procrastination is about avoiding tasks, while rewarding ourselves is about celebrating our progress and acknowledging our achievements. So let's learn how to use rewards to beat procrastination once and for all. First and foremost, it's important to understand that our brains are wired to seek pleasure and avoid pain. By setting up a reward system, you're essentially tricking your brain into thinking that the task is pleasurable. For example, if you have a big project to do at work, instead of dreading it, try breaking it down into smaller manageable chunks and setting a reward for each completed chunk. This could be something as simple as taking a short break to watch your favorite show or treating yourself to a cup of coffee. By creating a positive association with the task, you'll find it easier to tackle and ultimately beat procrastination. Next, it's important to set realistic and meaningful rewards. Many times we set rewards that are either too extravagant or too insignificant. If the reward is too big, we may end up procrastinating even more because the task seems too small in comparison. On the other hand, if the reward is too small, it may not be enough to motivate us. So it's important to find a balance and choose rewards that are meaningful to us. This could be something as simple as taking a bubble bath or treating yourself to a nice dinner. The key is to make it something that you truly enjoy and look forward to. Another tip for using rewards to beat procrastination is to make them specific and time-bound. When we have a clear goal and deadline for our reward, it creates a sense of urgency and accountability. For example, instead of saying, I'll reward myself when I finish this project, try saying, I'll reward myself with a spa day on Saturday if I finish this project by Friday. This not only gives you something to look forward to but also motivates you to complete the task within a specific time frame. Now, I want to address a common misconception about rewards. They don't have to be material things. While it's nice to treat ourselves with material possessions, there are other ways to reward ourselves that can be just as effective. For example, you can reward yourself with quality time with loved ones, the day off from work, or even a sense of accomplishment. The key is to find what truly brings you joy and use that as your reward. Lastly, I want to remind you that reward should not be used as a form of avoidance. If you find yourself constantly procrastinating and using rewards as an excuse, it's time to reevaluate your priorities and work ethic. Rewards should be used as a tool to motivate and celebrate, not as a way to escape from our responsibilities. Now, on to the fourth way, you can beat procrastination for good, which is eliminating distractions. In this fast-paced world, we're constantly bombarded with distractions that pull us away from our priorities and keep us from taking action towards our dreams. But distractions aren't the problem. It's our response to them that makes all the difference. We have the power to control our reactions and eliminate distractions from our lives. And that, my friends, is the key to beating procrastination for good. So how do we eliminate distractions? Let me share with you three powerful strategies that have helped me and countless others in their journey toward success. Firstly, we must identify our distractions. Take a moment to reflect on your day. What are the things that consume your time and energy? What are the activities that you engage in that do not align with your goals? It could be mindlessly scrolling through social media, binge-watching TV shows, or constantly checking your emails. 
whatever it may be, make a list of your distractions and be honest with yourself. Once we've identified our distractions, we must take action to eliminate them. This brings me to my second point. We must create an environment that supports our goals and minimizes distractions. This could mean setting boundaries with technology, decluttering our physical space, or even changing our daily routines. For example, if social media is a major distraction for you, consider deleting the apps from your phone or setting specific times during the day to check them. If your workspace is cluttered, take some time to organize it and create a conducive environment for productivity. And if you find yourself constantly checking your emails, schedule specific times during the day to respond to them instead of being at their beck and call. Remember, we are the architects of our own lives. We have the power to design our environment in a way that supports our goals and minimizes distractions. It may require some effort and discipline, but the results will be worth it. Lastly, we must learn to prioritize our tasks and focus on the most important ones. Often we get caught up in the busyness of our day-to-day -day lives and end up procrastinating on the tasks that truly matter. This is where the power of prioritization comes in. Take a moment to think about your goals. What are the things that will truly move you closer to them? What are the tasks that will have the most impact on your life? These are the things that should take priority over everything else. Once we've identified our priorities, we must learn to say no to distractions and focus on the task at hand. It may require some sacrifice, but we must remember that every time we choose to give in to distractions, we are sacrificing our dreams and goals. My friends, let me remind you that success is not a destination. It is a journey. And on this journey, we will face challenges and distractions. But if we stay focused on our priorities and eliminate distractions, we will be one step closer to our goals. Now, I'm not saying that distractions will disappear completely from our lives. They will always be there. But it is up to us to choose how we respond to them. Every time we choose to eliminate a distraction, we are choosing to invest in our future selves. And now, on to the third way, you can beat procrastination for good, which is creating a schedule and sticking to it. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have a to-do list? I'm sure most of you do. But how many of you actually follow that list and complete the tasks on time? I bet the number is not as high. You see, having a to-do list is not enough. We need to have a schedule, a plan, a roadmap to guide us towards our goals. Without a schedule, we're just wandering aimlessly. And that is a recipe for procrastination. So why is creating a schedule so important? First and foremost, it helps us to prioritize our tasks. We live in a world where we're bombarded with endless distractions and demands on our time. We have work, family, social obligations, and the list goes on. It's easy to get overwhelmed and lose track of what's truly important. But when we have a schedule, we know exactly what needs to be done and when. We can prioritize our tasks based on their importance and urgency. This not only helps us to be more productive, but also reduces our stress levels. Secondly, a schedule helps us to stay focused. When we have a set time for each task, we're less likely to get sidetracked. We all know how easy it is to get lost in the black hole of social media or spend hours binge-watching our favorite TV show. But when we have a schedule, we know that we have a limited amount of time to complete a task, and that keeps us focused and motivated. Now I know what some of you might be thinking. But Jim, I'm not a robot. I can't stick to a schedule every single day. And you're absolutely right. We're human beings, and we have our ups and downs. There will be days when we're not feeling our best, and that's okay. But here's the thing. A schedule is not meant to be rigid. It's meant to be flexible. Life happens, and we need to be adaptable. If we have a schedule, we can easily adjust it to accommodate unexpected events or changes in our mood. The key is to have a general structure that we can follow, but also leave room for flexibility. Now let's talk about the most crucial aspect of creating a schedule. Sticking to it. It's easy to make a schedule, but it takes discipline and determination to stick to it. We're creatures of habit, and it takes time and effort to form new habits. But I can guarantee you that once you start following a schedule, it will become second nature to you. You'll no longer have to rely on willpower to get things done because it will become a part of your routine. So how do we stick to a schedule? The first step is to be realistic. We often make the mistake of overestimating what we can accomplish in a day. We pack our schedules with tasks and end up feeling overwhelmed and defeated. Instead, start small. 
set achievable goals and gradually increase your workload. This will not only help you stick to your schedule, but also boost your confidence and motivation. The second step is to be disciplined. It's easy to hit the snooze button and skip your morning workout, or to procrastinate on a project because it seems daunting. But discipline is the key to success. You need to remind yourself of your goals and the reasons why you're following the schedule. And when you feel like giving up, remember this. Discipline weighs ounces while regret weighs tons. The third and final step is to have an accountability system. Find an accountability partner. Someone who will hold you accountable for your actions. It could be a friend, a family member, or even a coach. Knowing that someone is counting on you to follow through with your schedule will give you that extra push to stay on track. Now I want to leave you with a few practical tips for creating and sticking to a schedule. First, plan your day the night before. This will give you a head start and make your mornings more productive. Second, break down your tasks into smaller, more manageable chunks. This will make them less intimidating and more achievable. Third, schedule breaks and downtime. It's essential to give yourself time to recharge and rejuvenate. And lastly, be consistent. Stick to your schedule even on days when you don't feel like it. Consistency is the key to forming a habit. And now, on to the second way, you can beat procrastination for good, which is breaking tasks into smaller manageable chunks. We all have big dreams and ambitions, but often we get overwhelmed by the enormity of the tasks ahead of us. We procrastinate because we don't know where to start or how to tackle the mountain of work in front of us. But here's the truth. No task is too big or too difficult if we break it down into smaller manageable chunks. Think about it. When you look at a huge project or a daunting task, your mind immediately starts to come up with excuses and reasons why you can't do it. But when you break it down into smaller parts, suddenly it doesn't seem so impossible anymore. You start to see the individual steps that need to be taken, and you can focus on one at a time. Let me give you an example. Imagine you want to write a book. The thought of writing a whole book can be overwhelming and can easily lead to procrastination. But if you break it down into smaller chunks, such as writing a chapter a week or even a page a day, suddenly it becomes much more manageable. And before you know it, you have a completed book in your hands. The same principle applies to any task or goal you want to achieve whether it's starting a business, losing weight, or learning a new skill. Breaking it down into smaller chunks will make it less intimidating and more achievable. But breaking tasks into smaller chunks is not just about making things easier for ourselves. It also allows us to make progress and see results more quickly. When we have a big goal, we often put all our focus and energy into it, and it can take a long time before we see any tangible results. This can be demotivating and can lead to procrastination. But when we break it down into smaller chunks, we can celebrate small wins along the way, which keeps us motivated and moving forward. Another benefit of breaking tasks into smaller chunks is that it helps us to prioritize. When we have a long to-do list, it can be challenging to figure out where to start. But by breaking it down, we can identify which tasks are most important and need to be done first. This way, we are not wasting time on less critical tasks, and we are making progress towards our ultimate goal. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't have the time to break tasks into smaller chunks. I barely have enough time to get everything done as it is. And to that, I say, making time to break tasks down is an investment in your future success. It may seem like it's taking up more time in the short term, but in the long run, it will save you time and help you achieve your goals faster. So how do we go about breaking tasks into smaller manageable chunks? The first step is to clearly define the end goal. What is it that you want to achieve? Be specific and write it down. Next, brainstorm all the steps that need to be taken to achieve that goal. Don't worry about the order at this point, just get everything down on paper. Then, organize the steps in a logical order, starting with what needs to be done first. Finally, break down each step into smaller, more manageable tasks. Set deadlines for each task, and make sure to schedule them into your calendar. Remember, the key is to focus on one task at a time. Don't get overwhelmed by looking at the big picture. Instead, concentrate on the task at hand and give it your full attention. This will help you to be more productive and get things done more efficiently. I also want to remind you that it's essential to be flexible and adapt your plan if things don't go as expected. Life is unpredictable, and there may be obstacles or unexpected events that come up. But by breaking tasks into smaller chunks, you can adjust and continue to make progress towards your goal. And now, 
to the number one way you can beat procrastination for good, which is setting clear and specific goals. You see, procrastination thrives on ambiguity and lack of direction. When we don't have a clear target in mind, it's easy to procrastinate and get lost in the sea of distractions. But when we have a specific goal, a destination to reach, it becomes much easier to take action and stay focused. Let me share with you a personal story. When I was in my early 20s, I was working as a stock clerk at a small store. I had big dreams and aspirations, but I was constantly procrastinating and making excuses. One day my boss called me into his office and said, Jim, I see potential in you, but if you continue to procrastinate and not take action, you will never reach your full potential. Those words hit me hard, and I realized that I needed to set clear and specific goals if I wanted to achieve my dreams. That day, I went home and wrote down my goals. To become a successful entrepreneur, to travel the world, and to inspire others to reach their full potential. These were not just vague dreams. They were specific and measurable goals. I even set a deadline for each goal. And let me tell you, that was the turning point in my life. I started taking action, and within a few years, I had achieved all of my goals and more. Now I'm not saying that setting goals will magically make procrastination disappear. It takes discipline and commitment to follow through on our goals. But having a clear target in mind makes it much easier to stay on track and overcome procrastination. So how do we set clear and specific goals? Let me share with you a simple yet powerful framework that has helped me and thousands of others to achieve our goals. First, we need to have a clear understanding of what we want to achieve. This requires introspection and self-awareness. Take some time to think about your passion, your strengths, and your values. What do you want to accomplish in life? What legacy do you want to leave behind? Once you have a clear understanding of your desires, you can move on to the next step. Second, we need to make our goals specific and measurable. Instead of saying, I want to be successful, be specific about what success means to you. Is it financial freedom, a fulfilling career, or a happy family? And then, Set a measurable target. For example, I want to earn $100,000 in the next year. This gives you a clear target to work towards and allows you to track your progress. Third, we need to set a deadline for our goals. This is crucial because it creates a sense of urgency and helps us prioritize our actions. Without a deadline, our goals become mere wishes that we can put off indefinitely. So set a realistic but challenging deadline for each of your goals. Fourth, we need to break down our goals into smaller, actionable steps. This is where many people get stuck. They have big dreams and goals, but they don't know where to start. By breaking down our goals into smaller tasks, we make them more manageable and less overwhelming. This also allows us to track our progress and make adjustments if needed. Fifth, we need to hold ourselves accountable. It's easy to make excuses and give in to procrastination when we don't have anyone to answer to. But when we have someone to hold us accountable, we are more likely to take action and stay on track. This could be a friend, a mentor, or a coach who can provide support and guidance along the way. Sixth, we need to visualize our goals. This may sound like a cliche, but visualization is a powerful tool for achieving our goals. When we can see ourselves achieving our goals, it becomes easier to stay motivated and focused. So take some time every day to visualize yourself living your dream life. Whether it's running a successful business, traveling the world, or making a positive impact in the world. And finally, we need to take action. Setting goals is just the first step. The real work begins when we take action towards our goals. We need to be disciplined and consistent in our actions, even when we don't feel like it. Remember, success is not a one-time event. It's a result of daily habits and actions. Now, I know that setting goals may seem daunting to some of you, but let me tell you, the hardest part is getting started. Once you have a clear and specific goal, everything else falls into place. You become more focused, motivated, and determined to achieve your goals. And as you start seeing progress, you will gain momentum and become unstoppable. So my friends, I urge you to set clear and specific goals for yourself today. Don't let procrastination hold you back from living the life you deserve. Remember, the only way to beat procrastination for good is to have a clear target in mind. And once you achieve your goals, you will realize that the journey was just as rewarding as the destination. Thank you. 
In today's message, we're going to discuss something that I believe is on everyone's mind. How to become the best in whatever it is that we do. Whether it's in our careers, relationships, or personal goals, we all aspire to be the best version of ourselves. But the truth is, it can be a daunting task. We often find ourselves comparing our progress to others and feeling like we're not measuring up. However, I want to assure you that you are not alone. We all struggle with this at some point in our lives. But the good news is that by listening to this message, you can turn things around and start on the path to becoming the best in anything you choose to pursue. I have spent decades studying successful individuals from all walks of life, and I have discovered that there are certain principles and habits that they all share. Today, I am excited to share with you five of these ways that will help you become the best in anything. So sit back, take notes, and get ready to unleash your full potential. Let's get started. Starting with number five. The fifth way to achieve that level of greatness you desire is to never stop learning. Learning is not just something we do in school or to acquire a specific skill. It is a lifelong process that should never come to an end. It is the key to unlocking our full potential and becoming the best version of ourselves. And yet, so many of us stop learning once we finish our formal education or reach a certain level of success. But I am here to tell you that the true path to greatness lies in a commitment to continuous learning. Now you may be wondering, why is it so important to never stop learning? The answer is simple. The world is constantly evolving, and if we do not keep up with it, we will be left behind. The technology that we have today was not even imaginable 50 years ago, and yet here we are, using it to connect with people from all over the world. This is just one example of how the world is changing at a rapid pace, and if we do not continue to learn and adapt, we will be left behind. But it's not just about keeping up with the changing times. Learning also allows us to expand our knowledge and skills, making us more valuable individuals. It opens doors to new opportunities and allows us to take on challenges that we never thought possible. As the saying goes, knowledge is power, and the more we learn, the more powerful we become. Furthermore, learning keeps our minds sharp and active. Just like how we exercise our bodies to keep them healthy, we must also exercise our minds. Learning new things challenges our brains and helps us to stay mentally fit. As we age, it becomes even more crucial to continue learning to prevent cognitive decline. So if you want to keep your mind sharp and your brain functioning at its best, never stop learning. But learning is not just about acquiring new information or skills. It is also about personal growth and development. When we learn, we are forced to step out of our comfort zones and try new things. This helps us to discover our strengths and weaknesses and gives us the opportunity to improve ourselves. It allows us to break through self-imposed limitations and reach new heights. As the great Tony Robbins once said, if you're not growing, you're dying. Learning is the key to personal growth and development, and without it, we will become stagnant and unfulfilled. Now some of you may be thinking, but I don't have the time to learn new things. I'm too busy with work and other responsibilities. And to that I say, make the time. We all have the same 24 hours in a day, and it's up to us how we choose to use them. Instead of spending hours mindlessly scrolling through social media or binge-watching TV shows, dedicate some time each day to learning something new. It doesn't have to be a lot. Even just 15 minutes a day can make a huge difference. And with the abundance of resources available to us today, there is no excuse not to learn something new. Furthermore, learning doesn't have to be limited to traditional methods such as reading books or attending classes. We live in a digital age where information is at our fingertips. We can learn from online courses, podcasts, videos, and even social media. The possibilities are endless. So find a method that works for you and make learning a part of your daily routine. But perhaps the most important reason why we should never stop learning is that it keeps us humble. The more we learn, the more we realize how much we don't know. And this humbling experience keeps us grounded and open-minded. It allows us to see things from different perspectives and be more empathetic towards others. It also prevents us from becoming complacent and thinking that we know everything. As the saying goes, the more I learn, the more I realize how much I don't know. Next. I would like to share with you the fourth way to become the best in anything. As you may know, I have spent my life studying success and personal development, and I am here to tell you that the key to achieving greatness lies in consistent practice. Practice is the foundation upon which all skills and talents are built. 
It is the bridge between where you are now and where you want to be. Without practice, talent is just potential, and potential alone will not lead you to success. As the saying goes, practice makes perfect, and this statement is absolutely true. Now I know what some of you may be thinking, but I don't have the time to practice consistently. I have a job, a family, and other responsibilities. How can I possibly find the time to practice? My answer to you is this. If you truly want to become the best in anything, you must make the time. It is not about finding the time. It is about making the time. You must prioritize your goals and your dreams and make the necessary sacrifices to achieve them. Let me share with you a personal story. When I was just starting out in my career, I had a mentor who told me that if I wanted to become a successful speaker, I needed to practice my craft every single day. And so I made a commitment to practice for one hour every day, no matter what. Some days I was exhausted from my day job, and all I wanted to do was relax. But I knew that if I wanted to achieve my dream, I had to put in the time and effort. And let me tell you, that one hour of practice every day made all the difference. It allowed me to hone my skills, refine my message, and become the best speaker I could be. Consistent practice is not just about putting in the time, it is also about being intentional and deliberate in your practice. It is not enough to simply go through the motions, you must be fully present and engaged in your practice. This means setting specific goals, breaking down your skills into smaller manageable tasks, and constantly challenging yourself to improve. Another important aspect of consistent practice is staying committed and disciplined. It is easy to get discouraged when you don't see immediate results, but you must remember that success takes time and effort. You must stay committed to your practice even when it gets tough. As the saying goes, the only bad workout is the one that didn't happen. Every time you practice, you are making progress towards your goals, even if you can't see it right away. Consistent practice also allows you to develop a growth mindset. This means being open to learning, making mistakes, and constantly striving to improve. When you practice consistently, you are not just repeating the same actions over and over again. You are actively seeking ways to get better. As the great Michael Jordan once said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games, 26 times, I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. Failure is not a setback. It is an opportunity to learn and grow. Consistent practice also builds discipline and resilience. It teaches you to push through challenges and setbacks and to keep going even when things get tough. It is through consistent practice that you develop the mental toughness to overcome any obstacle that stands in your way. And let me tell you, the results of consistent practice are truly remarkable. Not only will you see improvement in your skills and abilities, but you will also see a transformation in your mindset and attitude. You will become more confident, more focused, and more determined to achieve your goals. You will also gain a sense of satisfaction and fulfillment from knowing that you are actively working towards becoming the best version of yourself. Next, let's discuss the third way to become the best in anything, and that's by learning from the best. I'm reminded of a quote by the great philosopher Aristotle, who said, Excellence is never an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, and intelligent execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. Choice, not chance, determines your destiny. Indeed, excellence is not something that happens by chance. It is a deliberate and conscious effort to constantly improve ourselves and strive for greatness. And one of the most effective ways to achieve this is by learning from the best. Think about it. In any field, whether it is sports, business, or the arts, there are always individuals who stand out from the rest. They have achieved a level of success and mastery that others can only dream of. And the key to their success? Learning from the best. So what does it mean to learn from the best? It means seeking out those who have already achieved what we want to achieve, and studying their habits, mindset, and strategies. It means being humble enough to admit that we don't know everything, and being open to learning from others. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't have access to these successful individuals. How can I learn from them? Well, my friends, we live in an age where information is readily available at our fingertips. We have books, podcasts, videos, and seminars that can provide us with valuable insights and lessons from the best in any field. But let me tell you, learning from the best is not just about acquiring knowledge, it's about applying that knowledge and taking action. As the saying goes, knowledge is power, 
but applied knowledge is true power. So how can we effectively learn from the best? Let me share with you three key steps. Firstly, we need to identify who the best are in our chosen field. This may seem like a no-brainer, but it's important to be specific. We can't just say, I want to learn from the best in business. We need to narrow it down. Who are the top entrepreneurs in our industry? Who are the most successful leaders in our company? By identifying these individuals, we can then study their journey and learn from their experiences. Secondly, we need to study their habits and mindset. Success leaves clues. My friends, and one of the biggest clues is the habits and mindset of successful individuals. What do they do on a daily basis? How do they approach challenges and setbacks? By studying and emulating their habits and mindset, we can start to see positive changes in our own lives. Lastly, we need to take action. Learning from the best is pointless if we don't apply what we've learned. We need to take consistent and deliberate action towards our goals. As the saying goes, the best way to learn is by doing. So don't just read books or listen to podcasts. Take action and apply what you've learned. Now some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I'm afraid of failure. What if I try and I fail? Well, let me tell you, my friends, failure is not something to be feared. It is a necessary part of the journey toward success. In fact, the most successful individuals have failed countless times before achieving their goals. But the key is to learn from those failures and keep moving forward. As the great inventor Thomas Edison once said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. So don't let the fear of failure hold you back from learning from the best and achieving your goals. Now, I want to share with you a personal story. When I first started my journey towards personal development, I was a young man with big dreams, but no direction. I didn't have access to successful individuals, and I didn't know how to learn from them. But then I stumbled upon a book by the legendary motivational speaker Earl Nightingale, and let me tell you, that book changed my life. I learned about the power of goal setting, the importance of taking action, and the success of countless others. I am talking about the power of developing a growth mindset. Now, what exactly is a growth mindset, you may ask? Well, let me tell you. A growth mindset is the belief that our abilities and intelligence can be developed and improved through hard work, dedication, and a willingness to learn. It is the understanding that our potential is not set in stone, but rather something that we can continuously expand and improve upon. You see, many people have a fixed mindset. They believe that their abilities and intelligence are set in stone, and there is nothing they can do to change it. They see failure as a reflection of their own limitations, and they give up easily when faced with challenges. But let me tell you, this kind of mindset will only hold you back from reaching your full potential. On the other hand, those with a growth mindset see failure as an opportunity to learn and grow. They understand that success is not a result of innate talent, but rather hard work, perseverance, and a willingness to learn from mistakes. They are not afraid to take on challenges because they know that even if they fail, they will come out stronger and more knowledgeable on the other side. So how can you develop a growth mindset? It all starts with your thoughts and beliefs. You must first believe that you are capable of growth and improvement. You must believe that your potential is not limited by your current abilities, but rather limitless. Next, you must be willing to put in the work. As the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day. The same goes for your skills and abilities. It takes time, effort and dedication to see improvement and growth. But I can assure you it will all be worth it in the end. Another important aspect of developing a growth mindset is embracing challenges. Too often we shy away from challenges because we are afraid of failure. But let me tell you, failure is not something to be feared. It is a necessary part of the learning process. Embrace challenges and see them as opportunities to learn and improve. In addition to embracing challenges, it is also important to seek out feedback. Feedback is crucial in our growth and development. It allows us to see our blind spots and areas where we can improve. But it is important to remember that feedback is not a reflection of our worth as individuals. It is simply a tool to help us grow and become better versions of ourselves. Now I know that developing a growth mindset is not always easy. It takes discipline and a strong mindset to overcome the natural tendency to stick with what is comfortable and familiar. But I can assure you, the rewards are well worth the effort. You see, when you have a growth mindset, you are not limited by your current abilities. You are constantly pushing yourself to learn and improve, 
and this is what sets you apart from the rest. It is what allows you to become the best in whatever it is that you do. But let me be clear. Having a growth mindset does not mean that you will never fail. Failure is a natural part of the journey toward success. But the difference is, those with a growth mindset do not let failure define them. They use it as a stepping stone towards their ultimate goal. And now, to number one. As I stand here before you, I am reminded of the great words of the legendary Zig Ziglar, who once said, You were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win, prepare to win, and expect to win. These words hold so much truth, and are the foundation of what I am about to share with you today. My friends, we all have dreams, aspirations, and goals that we want to achieve in our lives. It could be anything from becoming the best athlete, musician, or entrepreneur, to being the best parent, spouse, or friend. But the question is, how do we turn these dreams into reality? How do we become the best in anything we set our minds to? The answer, my friends, is simple, yet powerful. Set clear and specific goals. Yes, you heard it right. Setting clear and specific goals is the number one way to become the best in anything. You see, goals are the fuel that drives us toward success. They give us direction, purpose, and motivation. They are the roadmap that leads us to our desired destination. And without them, we are like a ship without a rudder, drifting aimlessly in the vast sea of life. But let me tell you something, my friends. Setting goals is not just about writing down a list of things you want to achieve. It's about creating a clear and specific plan of action that will help you reach those goals. It's about setting a target and then working tirelessly towards it with unwavering determination and persistence. Let me share with you a personal story. When I was in my 20s, I was working as a stock clerk at a department store. I was barely making enough to make ends meet, and I knew that I wanted more out of life. I wanted to be successful, financially secure, and live a life of abundance. So I set a clear and specific goal to become a millionaire by the time I turned 30. Now some people might have thought I was crazy, but I didn't let their opinions deter me. I knew what I wanted, and I was willing to do whatever it takes to achieve it. I started reading books, attending seminars, and learning from successful people. I also started setting smaller, achievable goals that would eventually lead me to my ultimate goal of becoming a millionaire. And guess what, my friends? By the time I turned 31, I had not only achieved my goal of becoming a millionaire, but I had also become a successful entrepreneur, author, and motivational speaker. And it all started with setting a clear and specific goal. You see, when you set a clear and specific goal, you are giving yourself a target to aim for. You are creating a vision of what you want to achieve, and that vision becomes your driving force. It gives you a sense of purpose and direction, and it helps you stay focused and motivated even when faced with challenges and obstacles. But setting clear and specific goals is just the first step, my friends. The next step is to take massive action towards those goals. You see, goals without action are just dreams. You can have the most well-defined and specific goals, but if you don't take action, they will remain just that. Goals. But what does taking massive action mean? It means creating a plan and then executing it with all your heart and soul. It means being willing to put in the hard work, the long hours, and the sacrifices that are necessary to achieve your goals. It means being persistent and never giving up, even when things get tough. And let me tell you, my friends, there will be times when things will get tough. There will be setbacks, failures, and disappointments. But it is during these times that your goals will keep you going. They will remind you of why you started in the first place and give you the strength and determination to keep moving forward. But setting clear and specific goals and taking massive action is not enough, my friends. The third and equally important step is to continuously evaluate and adjust your goals. You see, as you progress towards your goals, you will encounter new opportunities, challenges, and experiences. And these may require you to make adjustments to your goals. For example, let's say your goal is to lose 20 pounds in six months. As you start working towards it, you realize that you are losing weight faster than expected, and you are feeling healthier and more energetic. In this case, it would be wise to adjust your goal and aim for a higher weight loss, or focus on maintaining your current weight and building muscle. On the other hand, if you are not making progress towards your goal, it might be time to reevaluate your plan and make necessary changes. Maybe you need to seek help from a mentor or a coach, or perhaps you need to change your approach. 
The key is to be flexible and open to adjustments as long as they align with your ultimate goal. Imagine a garden where your thoughts are seeds. Just like a gardener, you have the power to nurture these seeds into something beautiful, or let them wither away. This garden is your mind. Today, let's discuss transforming it into a sanctuary of success. You all know, my friends, every great achievement in history began with a simple idea. These ideas, like seeds, have the potential to grow into something magnificent. But it all starts with the soil, your mindset. A mindset geared towards success is where ideas sprout, grow, and flourish. How do we create this fertile ground? It begins with belief in yourself, your dreams, and the possibility of achieving them. It's about seeing opportunity in challenges and lessons in setbacks. Each morning, affirm to yourself, Today, I take one more step towards my dreams. As we go through these ideas together, remember this. Getting your mind right for success isn't just about thinking happy thoughts. It's about changing how you see life altogether. It's about making choices that match up with what you want, hanging out with people who lift you up, and most importantly, knowing that you're in charge of your own destiny. So, are you ready to plant the seeds of success in your mind? Let's do this journey together, side by side, and turn our minds into powerful engines of success. Step 1. Starting to think positively is as easy as taking one step at a time. Decide to see the world not just as it is, but as it could be. Picture yourself as a sculptor. Every thought you have shapes your life. The cool thing? You're the one with the tools. You have the power to sculpt your life into something amazing. Think about your usual day. From the moment you wake up to when you go to sleep, every moment is full of choices. How you see these moments, how you handle them, that's where having a positive attitude matters. It's like looking at a glass of water. You can see it as half empty or half full. That choice, that way of looking at it, changes everything. Positive thinking isn't about ignoring life's problems. It's about facing them with the right mindset. When you come across a challenge, you can let it beat you, or you can see it as a chance to get stronger. It's about saying, I might not control what happens, but I do control how I react. That's what a positive mindset is all about. Let's talk about gratitude, which is like giving sunshine to your soul. Instead of wishing for what you lack, it's about appreciating what you have. Start your day by listing three things you're thankful for, even if they're as simple as a sunny day or a cup of coffee. This practice sets a positive tone for the day. Additionally, surround yourself with positive influences. Just like a mirror reflects its surroundings, you absorb the energy of those around you. So, choose people who uplift and inspire you, as their positivity will help shape your mindset. Having a positive mindset also means being kind to yourself. The words you say to yourself matter a lot. Instead of criticizing yourself, be compassionate. Replace doubt with belief. When you change how you talk to yourself, you change your life. Remember, developing a positive mindset is a journey, not a destination. It's something you work on every day, like taking care of a garden. Just like a garden needs water and sunlight, your mindset needs nurturing throughout your day. In step two, let's delve into the importance of learning and growth. Learning and growing mean being able to adapt to change. It's about staying open to new ideas and opportunities, and not letting change overwhelm us. Just like tending to a growing tree, we need to be patient with our own growth. Every effort we make brings us closer to our goals. Embracing learning and growth is like being a student of life. It means staying curious, open-minded, and resilient. Success isn't a straight path, it's full of twists and turns. So let's keep moving forward, ready to learn from every experience and embrace every challenge. That's how we become the successful people we want to be. In step three, let's talk about setting goals and picturing success. Setting goals is essential because they provide direction and purpose. They act as signposts, guiding you on the journey of life towards your desired destination. Without goals, you may drift aimlessly. However, with clear goals, you take control of your path, acting as the captain of your ship, steering intentionally towards your goals. Setting effective goals involves more than simply stating a desire for success. It requires specificity. Consider it akin to planning a trip. You wouldn't just declare, I'm going somewhere. Instead, you'd meticulously plan your destination, route, and activities. Apply the same approach to goal setting. 
Ensure your goals are clear, measurable, and attainable. They should ignite your passion and resonate with your deepest aspirations. Visualizing your success is the next step. When you vividly picture achieving your goals, you're using a powerful tool embraced by athletes and achievers worldwide. Visualization primes your mind to seize opportunities and fuels your inner motivation. It's vital to align your actions with your goals, ensuring each step moves you closer to success. Flexibility is key. The path may not be linear, but adaptability ensures progress. Remember, goal setting and visualization are ongoing processes, evolving with your growth. Keep your goals clear, celebrate milestones, and stay committed to your vision with purposeful action and unwavering determination. Success is within reach. In step 4, let's delve into building resilience and overcoming adversity. It's about turning challenges into stepping stones for success and growing stronger with each step. With our goals set and visions clear, we're prepared to tackle anything with strength and determination. Resilience and overcoming adversity aren't just words. They're vital life skills that distinguish achievers from dreamers. Resilience acts as armor, shielding and propelling us forward. View it as a journey, not a destination. A process of learning, adapting, and emerging stronger. It all starts with self-belief. The foundation of resilience. Understanding that challenges are a natural part of life is crucial. It's not about if they will come, but when they do, how will you react? Will you let them knock you down, or will you see them as opportunities to grow stronger? Perspective is key here. Viewing challenges as chances to learn changes everything. It turns setbacks into comebacks. Emotional intelligence is vital. Managing your feelings, understanding them, and using them wisely is essential. Though it's easy to feel overwhelmed by emotions like fear or frustration, recognizing and handling them calmly helps you stay focused. Persistence is another key. It's about pushing forward even when things get tough, driven by your passion and purpose. With a clear vision of your goals, you'll find the strength to keep going. Learning from failure is a big part of resilience. Instead of seeing failure as the end, see it as a chance to learn and grow. Analyze what went wrong, learn from it, and use that knowledge to do better next time. This turns failure into a tool for success. Taking care of your physical and mental health is also crucial for resilience. Regular exercise, eating well, enough sleep, and practices like meditation can really help. A healthy body and mind are your best defenses against tough times. Resilience is also about seeking and giving support. Surround yourself with people who support you, and be there for others too. Sometimes just a few words of encouragement can make a big difference. And don't forget to celebrate your victories, no matter how small. Every time you overcome a challenge, take a moment to pat yourself on the back. This boosts your confidence and reminds you of your strength. In summary, building resilience and overcoming adversity are key steps towards success. They make you stronger and better prepared for whatever life throws your way. As we move on to nurturing relationships and networking, remember that the resilience we've built not only helps us personally, but also strengthens our connections with others. Step 5 is all about nurturing relationships and networking. Success isn't just about you, it's about the connections you make. Picture a tree. It stands tall because of its strong roots spreading in all directions. Similarly, our success is rooted in the relationships we build. These connections offer support, wisdom, and opportunities we couldn't achieve alone. Nurturing relationships means more than just making connections. It's about building genuine bonds. It's about investing time to understand and appreciate others, valuing what they bring to your life, and giving back. Start by being empathetic and listening. Truly hear others, understand their viewpoints, and show genuine interest in their lives. This builds trust and respect the foundation of strong relationships. Networking isn't just about swapping business cards. It's about forming genuine connections. It's finding common ground, sharing ideas, and embracing different perspectives. These connections open doors to opportunities and collaborations. Giving back in relationships is vital. Support others without expecting anything in return. From offering advice to making introductions, helping others builds a strong community. Choose your connections wisely. Surround yourself with positive influences who uplift and inspire you. Quality matters more than quantity. Authenticity is key. Be yourself, and you'll attract those who appreciate your honesty and transparency. 
Continuously nurturing relationships is vital, much like tending a garden. It involves staying connected, checking in, and being there when needed. Show that you value the bond. Networking and building relationships push you to grow personally. They encourage you to step beyond your comfort zone, meet diverse people, and explore new ideas, enriching both your personal and professional life. Patience is key in networking. Meaningful connections take time to develop, akin to nurturing a seed into a flourishing plant. Over time, these bonds become invaluable assets. While technology aids networking, personal interaction remains unmatched. Social media connects globally, but face-to-face -face encounters forge deeper connections that virtual platforms can't replicate. Let's also emphasize the importance of diversity in our relationships and networks. Engaging with people from different backgrounds, industries, and cultures broadens our worldview. It challenges our assumptions, introduces us to fresh ideas, and sparks creativity. Embracing diversity enriches our relationships, offering a wealth of knowledge and perspectives. As we nurture these relationships, let's maintain balance. Strike a healthy equilibrium between our professional and personal lives. Relationships should enrich our lives, not consume them. Setting boundaries and taking time for ourselves ensure a well-rounded life, leading to more fulfilling connections and success. Additionally, remember that relationships thrive on reciprocity. Being generous with our time, knowledge, and resources fosters a cycle of mutual benefit. Success often relies on teamwork, with our support network lifting us higher and offering invaluable guidance and encouragement. In essence, nurturing relationships and networking form the bedrock of a supportive community fostering learning and growth. Cherish these connections as they guide us through life's twists and turns, offering illumination, guidance, and reminders of our shared humanity. As we conclude our exploration of this vital element, let's move forward with a renewed appreciation for the people in our lives. Let's continue to cultivate these relationships with care, understanding that each person adds a unique color to the canvas of our journey. Hand in hand with those who walk this path with us, Let's step forward together with confidence and gratitude into a future bright with possibility, enriched with the rewards of nurtured relationships and a strong supportive network. The essence of our journey lies in realizing that success isn't just about personal achievements, but also about the impact we have on others and the legacy we leave behind. As we navigate this journey, let's reflect on how our actions shape our lives and whether they align with our deepest values. Let's commit to lifelong learning staying open to new experiences, and embracing growth and opportunity. Gratitude is a powerful companion on this journey, transforming ordinary moments into treasures and challenges into opportunities for appreciation. By living in the present moment and cultivating gratitude, we enhance our resilience and enrich our journey towards success with fulfillment and joy. Ultimately, success is about the depth of our experiences and our appreciation for the journey itself. Let's embrace gratitude and present moment awareness as vital companions, ensuring that our pursuit of success is meaningful, purposeful, and joyful. Through principles like embracing learning and growth, setting clear goals, visualizing success, building resilience, and nurturing relationships, individuals can reshape their thinking and habits to align with their aspirations. By implementing these strategies consistently, individuals can reprogram their minds for success and navigate their journey with confidence and purpose.